My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. The most important thing about delta G is you must know that if delta G is negative, it is spontaneous. You just have to remember, delta G must be negative for the reaction to be spontaneous. And spontaneous simply means that the reaction goes to completion under the conditions described. In this question, they're clearly asking you to know that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This is one of those formulae you just have to remember. Okay, there are a few things about it you have to remember. One is that T is in Kelvin. Fortunately, I do give it to you there. The second thing is the delta H and the delta S must be in the same unit. And whereas delta H is usually given in kilojoules per mole, delta S generally is given in joules per mole per Kelvin. So that has to be changed. In, and in general, the delta G is usually in kilojoules as well. So it's best to change the delta S by dividing that by a thousand. Anyway, let's put these figures in. Delta G equals the delta H is 10 uh, minus 298. So it's 298, that's the temperature. Delta S is 10 divided by a thousand. And that clearly looks like which equals 7.02 and it is positive. So the answer is that. So you did need to do a, a calculation. Uh, I would like to say that you could have eliminated C and D but you'd have to do the calculation to verify whether it's A or B. In this question, the examiner is simply seeing if you can understand some of the words in the question and determine the signs of delta H, delta S and delta G from the words. First of all, when hydrogen peroxide decomposes, ah, that means delta G must be negative because the reaction is going. It's a spontaneous reaction and the reaction is going to completion, this reaction. So we're looking for delta G negative. Uh, well, it's one of those three, A, B or C. And then it says the temperature of the reaction mixture increases. Therefore, immediately we know that delta H is negative. So, out of these three, there are the top two, A and B. So, those are the possibilities, A or B. And then we look at this equation, and we see that, as so far as delta S is concerned, this is positive, because the delta S will increase the, the, an increase in disorder simply because this is aqueous, and that's a gas and that makes it delta S positive. So the answer is B. This is one of those questions where the words tell you everything. Potassium chloride, KClO3, dissolves in distilled water. And that is the annual reaction we're dealing with. Therefore, delta G is negative for this reaction. So it's either B or C. The second thing is that the temperature decreases. So therefore, delta H is positive. That's there. And in fact, that's the only one. And we know because when a salt dissolves in water, the delta S is positive. 
We know therefore the answer in this case is definitely B. Again, when I look at this kind of question, I think, well, chemistry tells me the answer. Basic chemistry tells me the answer. I immediately go to this one. Calcium carbonate, I know, is not spontaneous at low temperatures because calcium carbonate is a fairly stable solid at low temperatures, room temperature, etc. But when you heat it, it breaks down into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. I know that. So that seems to be the best bet at the moment. Looking at, from the point of view of chemistry, looking at the others, this one, well, iron will react with chlorine at all temperatures, I think, most temperatures. So that doesn't fit in with not spontaneous at low temperatures. This one, I don't think this will go at all at any temperature. Carbon plus water goes to ethanoic acid. I don't think that will ever go. And this one is spontaneous at low temperatures and so on. So I would go for this one, B. I would take B. Now, you could do the next thing, which is go to the equation. If you're not quite clear about the chemistry, then you go to the equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. They tell you what delta H is. Uh, and that you can work out, let's say for the A, we do for A, delta H is negative. I tell you that. Delta S is there's three molecules of gas there, and there's three molecules of gas there. So that's zero. So delta G is always spontaneous, which is what we know. Delta G is always negative. Negative. So it's always spontaneous. Let's go to B. B is delta S is positive. Delta H is positive. And therefore, delta G is going to be, well, if that's positive, when the T is a low temperature, let's say zero, Delta H is positive, and therefore delta G is positive. So that's a low temperature, low T. I, th I always think of T equals zero as a low temperature. It makes it easier to understand. When T is zero, delta G is positive, because delta H is positive. Therefore, it's not spontaneous at low temperature, not spon at low T. Now, we go to high T, and I think high T, ten, T equals 10,000, or something ridiculously high. And what happens there? Delta H is very small relative to what is a negative number, because that's positive, so that becomes a negative and very high number. very high number. So delta G is negative at high temperatures, spontaneous at high temperatures, which confirms that. Then go to C. Well, this is delta S is negative because you have a gas there and you don't have any gases on that side, so delta S is negative. Uh, delta H, they tell you, is negative. Negative. Therefore, delta G, so when T equals zero, T equals zero at low temperature, delta G is negative, and that contradicts this. It is spontaneous at low temperatures. C is spontaneous at low temperatures. And D, that one, which is okay, that uh, delta S is negative, another negative, delta H is positive, and what we have here is, because there's a negative sign there, that becomes a positive number plus a positive number, and delta G is always non Spontaneous. 
always non-spontaneous. So we go back to the fact that B is the only one that fits in. If you went through all of this, which would take you some time to work through, I admit, you will find that B is the only one that fits with the question. But if you looked at it from the point of view of chemistry, you would see that this is spontaneous, that is spontaneous, that is never spontaneous. And this would fit. Spontaneous at low temperatures, yes, we know the calcium carbonate is stable. You heat it up and it breaks down. So it's spontaneous at high temperatures, not spontaneous at low temperatures. This is another question based on the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. They tell you that the delta H and delta S are negative and immediately you have to see that this must be a temperature dependent reaction. Immediately you must see that in order to determine the sign of delta G, this is temperature dependent. If delta H is negative if, and T is zero, then delta G is negative. If T is very high, 10,000, 100,000, then delta G becomes positive simply because the, this then becomes more important than that. Again, it's a kind of thing which is very mathematical and you just have to play around with these to feel comfortable with changing the signs of these without being given numbers, just changing the signs of delta H and delta S and not having numbers. So looking at that, I would say immediately it cannot be determined without knowing the temperature. You can confirm that by looking at this, A, it is negative at all temperatures. No, we know it's not negative at all temperatures. It is positive at all temperatures. No, we know it's not positive at all temperatures. It is negative at high temperatures. No, we found out that it's actually negative at low temperatures. So C is out. So D is the only possibility. And I would suggest that you practice with this equation thinking about these signs until you can do it with ease. This is one of those questions where the examiner is checking whether you can understand the words of the question and whether you could see the, the hints given. Because he's telling you that the reaction is spontaneous. He's telling you it's spontaneous at high temperature. And then what is the minimum temperature at which it's spontaneous? Well, if it's spontaneous at high temperatures, then we're looking at C and D. So the question is, how do you differentiate between a high temperature of 88 degrees, which some people may say is high, others may not say it's high, but certainly 394 is high. The thing is to look at this, and what do you see? Water, gas, therefore, the temperature of the reaction is above 100 degrees centigrade. This is the minimum temperature at which it becomes spontaneous. You may decide to do the calculation. So let's go. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. You are told delta H at 100 you don't know the T, this is the unknown, and you know delta S is 150. As soon as you see that, you check the unit. That's a J, and that's a KJ. So you've got to divide this by a thousand. So you've got to divide that by a thousand. Now, the next thing is the minimum temperature at which it's spontaneous, meaning that you want delta G to be the smallest possible negative number. In fact, let's start with delta G equals zero. And then we know that as the temperature rises, because of this, that's positive and that's negative, as the temperature rises, it will become more spontaneous. Delta G will become more negative. So by putting delta G equals zero, we find the minimum temperature. So that means that T150 over 1000 equals 100 and the temperature equals 100. 
thousand over a hundred and fifty, which equals approximately six six seven Kelvin. Kelvin. Take off your two seven three and you get four nine three nine four degrees centigrade. Back to there again. So I see some of these questions are questions about chemistry and taking the hints that the examiner gives you. He says spontaneous at high temperatures and then he says the water is a gas. And that leads you immediately to D394. And then if you're willing to do the calculation, again the calculation shouldn't take too long but you get to the same answer. If you found this YouTube video helpful, then please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.